Hey, this is Matt Whitmer from Ready Precision. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a new product from Phoenix Contact, their VL3 UPC box PC. It's going to be this guy right here. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at that hands-on in a moment. But before we do that, I wanted to bring you over to Phoenix Contact's website um, and show you the configuration wizard um, and the configuration that I think is probably best suited for our world um, and give you a little bit of a look at uh, what that configuration is and what that gets us. So let's jump over there. Um, so we'll have this link in the description um, to Phoenix's website. What we're going to do is just going to hit configure here, wait for this uh, configuration uh, wizard to load up. All right, so first thing, we've got a couple options for mounting. Obviously, this depends on your application. I'm going to go with DIN rail. I think that's probably the most universal processor. We're going to go with the faster of the two. These are Atom processors, not the fastest processor in the world. Your laptop probably has a faster processor, but your laptop also has a fan inside um, and a bunch of other stuff that makes it larger and hotter. This doesn't really have any moving parts in it at all. Uh, no fan or anything like that and part of that is because this processor allows them to do that so we're going to do the 1.5 gigahertz model main memory will leave at 16 gig uh, we're going to be running windows and probably i think most use cases are going to be running niagara or something along those lines so that 16 gigs of memory is uh, going to help out a lot for our storage we're just going to leave that at the default of 128 or 120 gig uh, we also have the ability to throw in additional storage if we wanted to. Um, again, that depends on your application. I think for the most part, 120 gigs is probably going to be okay. But if you know you're going to be uh, keeping a lot of histories or something along those lines, uh, you can definitely add in more storage to make that work. Operating system, we obviously want Windows 10. Software option, this is for Phoenix's uh, HMI software. We obviously aren't going to need that for this application. Um, this one is really tempting. You'll get to extended function one and you'll see RS-232, 485. Hmm. Could I run BACnet MSTP to this thing and use it like a soft chase or something like that? Not anymore. Back in the day, that used to be a, a possibility that you used to be able to do with Niagara. You can't do that anymore. So none is what you, what you want here unless you have a specific application that you know will work with software running on a Windows machine using 485. Uh, for Niagara, you can't use 485 directly into a PC running supervisor software. TPM, uh, we probably don't need that, so we're going to say no. Extended module, Wi-Fi, if you want Wi-Fi, that's what this is going to be. We'll say yes to that because I think that um, gives us a little bit of additional f uh, flexibility. And then we've got this extended function four, which is going to give us a couple of different options. Um, if you want that additional storage, you're going to select that one. If you want a built-in cellular modem, that's an option for us here. And then you also have the addition um, of two extra Ethernet ports, which you can see my model has here. This whole extra block here on the side is for those two eth extra Ethernet ports and that extended function for. Uh, I don't think most people are going to need it, but again, if you have the, um, the need, that option is there for you. So we'll say none, save the configuration, and then this is the specific configuration that... Uh, I would recommend you use and we'll have a link to that down in the description as well so now that we've looked through the specs and things um, let's jump into the hands-on and take a quick look at it uh, on my desk here all right so this is the VL3 UPC uh, first and foremost it's really really solidly built um, as you would expect from Phoenix Contact, it's made to um, take a beating, even though it probably won't, um, and it's going to live in a panel. Uh, it's definitely uh, not your normal uh, computer style build. Um, but if we look on the front, 
main IO section of the box here. First thing you'll note, uh, it uses DisplayPort for video, not HDMI, so just keep that in mind uh, that you've got DisplayPort there. We've got two USB ports, two Ethernet ports, uh, a bunch of status LEDs across the board here, CPU, GPIO, uh, SATA, and power. And then we've got our uh, terminal for uh, power itself. This uh, uses 24 volts DC, and this particular um, model with the higher uh, powered CPU uses up to 2 amps. So also keep that in mind because if, if you're using a power supply that doesn't supply enough power, um, what you'll see happen is um, the computer will start up and work, but then it'll just randomly restart. Um, I know this from experience, so just make sure that you have a uh, power supply that you're using with this that is uh, properly rated. Um, on the side here, you'll see the cutouts for the COM ports. Uh, like I mentioned in the specification portion of uh, this video where you're picking everything out, um, I wouldn't go with these unless you have a very specific use case where you know that you'll be able to use them um, because Niagara is not that use case. Our antenna here for uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because this uh, model, we did turn that on. And if we go back to the main I.O., you'll see this uh, second section of the PC. That's the expansion part. If you order it um, as I spec'd it out at the beginning of this video, you won't even have this portion. It'll just be this that your form factor is. This is the additional two Ethernet ports, though. And then if we go to the other side, I'm just going to put my thumb over the Windows uh, information. Um, we've got our all of our uh, information about the device itself, uh, MAC addresses, that kind of thing, and then the other antenna. We look at the back, really, really, really beefy DIN rail um, connection here, um, as you would expect from Phoenix Contact. This thing it does have some beef to it, though, so um, that is nice to see. And then we've got um, a little bit of heat sink action on both of the sides. So that is the little bit of hands-on here for the uh, VL3 UPC. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that information was helpful for you. We've done a bunch of testing on a, a few different models uh, from a few different manufacturers on these uh, box style PCs. And I think this one is the best that we've been able to get our hands on yet. So um, definitely if you're in the market for a PC to go in a panel, this would be the one to get. As I mentioned before, links will be in the description to the recommended version as well as that page on the Phoenix Contact website with more details on it. Um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. If you have any qu comments, leave them down in the description below, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.